In this video, we'll be starting the series for this, you know, Snake IO multiplayer game. I think we all know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, this so for this series, we will not be making an authoritative game. That means um, the client controls everything, and you know, for learning, this is good enough. But for production, you will have to add a lot of extras here to make it work properly. But anyways, this is a really interesting concept what I was playing with right now, the whole, you know, snake body movement thing. And let me show you guys how I'm going to do it. I barely came up with this like a few minutes ago. So, okay, yeah. Firstly, I have a sprite here. It's just small. It's just a ball, you know, I, I painted it. And the game maker uh, edited it with this option. So... I'll create an object here called O head. And the way we'll make this whole snake like movement happen is you know, we'll have bones. So, head is one bone, and then what we'll have is tail. So, you know, one it'll be it's not exactly a tail, but it's a part of a tail. And every preceding part of a tail will follow the part in front of it. You know, it's something like that. I'll show you guys. Firstly, what do we need here? Let's see. You know, for that whole tail thing, I'll make an array. Let me call it global.body. Okay. And in global.body, we'll have all the bones. So it starts with the head. You know, we, we'll have only one head, but we'll have many tails. Let me also create a tail. So control D. We have tail oh, wait I didn't even assign the slide similarly here we have this and then in, oh, yeah so let me also make use of the health variable so health will be how many bones we have total you know something like that it's not it's more like length so it's more like score actually but for now let me just keep it to health so if our health is one, we'll have only one bone. Well, you know, it's it's similar to length. We have ten health. It's a bigger snake. So let me set it to two right. Okay. And now I'll explain to you what global body is. In global body, we'll have the instant uh, instance IDs of all our bones. So the first bone is O head. So the second one would be you know O tail. Uh, sorry. O tail and O tail, but you know when we do this, we take only the latest instance of O tail. We need that exact ID. So you know we'll have like maybe that ID would be three something. I'm just typing random numbers, but this would be the next bone after head. This would be the next bone after you know this one. So that's how we'll make this. So this array kind of represents the whole body structure. You guys get it all right now let's see what we can do here okay the health you know the health this so the global body needs to adapt to the health by adding or removing more bones okay so it's two here so we need to remove one because there'll be two elements and we'll do all that with code for now let that just be head okay and now another variable we really need is the distance between bone. Is there a nice biological name for that? I think ligaments. Okay, I think tendons join two bones. So let me just call it tendon length. Wow, that's cool. Let me just call it tendon. Yeah. And let that be, I guess, 8 pixels. Nah, 10 pixels is cool. Saving it. And now let's see the tail code as of now all we have is a head and how will a tail work so let me add a statement create event has okay i copied it from there so i don't even need a creative so in this 
step event what should happen we need to follow the preceding bond the bond in front of us right let me just call it preceding bond i think it's not preceding but i don't know so how do we decide which bond that is and remember in this body there are it's there are instance id of tails okay so let there be one two three four forget the health variable and all that fun so this is the first let's say this is the instance id of the first tail bond second instance id of the second tail bond you know that way so let's say this is let's say okay sorry so here let's say this is instance id 2 okay 2 so if this you know the the object will know its instance id it's just this so how do we actually find out where we are in this for that in that body array for that let's put a for loop so for uh, bar i equal 0 um, i lesser than array length um array length what of global dot body and i plus plus so this would you know help us traverse through all elements in the body thing so let's do a couple of things here so let me say var cb so this is the current bond okay let that be global dot body i and let preceding bond be uh, var pb i guess it's the bond in front of us i don't know why i'm calling it preceding but maybe it works so this is the current element and this is the element before us got it and actually um it makes better sense to start from 1 because i minus 1 you know it will not work here so yeah and yeah this will be the current one this will be the bond in uh in front of us got it so if so you know as we traverse through this array so at i equals 1 so cb will be the cur- cb will be this and pb will be this so we want to make this follow this we have to make the first tail bone follow the head okay head is also a bone so now how do we do that and how is our tendon variable going to be helpful you know just think of tendon as you know the space between bones okay so let's see Wow. Let me make a variable var spacing is equal to point point distance. Wait, I have to. Yeah, we get there, but we have to do another thing first. So we are in a partic. We are in the step event of O T. So we have to check if we found. So this, let's say, this is instance number two. so we have to find instance number 2 in array right so we have to do this if cb is equal to r id okay if it is this bond we have found r bond then we have the we have the preceding bond as well yeah then we need to look at our spacing just find out so it's point distance x y this bond and the bond in front of us so pb dot x and pb dot y got it now a better way of actually figuring out the spacing uh, what we'll actually do is we'll see if spacing is you know greater than the ten global dot tendon because tendon is the is supposed to be somewhat the fixed distance between bonds so if the spacing is greater than global dot tendon 
so the two bonds are very far away what do we do we need to bring them close so it would go something like this we would say um point okay yeah direction is equal to point direction uh, actually to be honest we have a much simpler way of doing this we just need to bring this bond closer to the bond in front of us and we just say x is equal to um pb dot x into wait we'll take yeah we have to interpolate these two so x is equal to the current x into 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 into pb dot x so this way we are kind of taking setting our x position to something close to us but we are setting our x position to um, what what the current x is a part of that and a part of the x of the bone we are getting closer to and let's do this with y as well so we have y here y is equal to y into 0 0.5 plus this and you know if you think about it even if the spacing is lesser which means if the if two bones are very close together okay no we cannot do that in that case actually sorry so if, the, if two bones are far away this will bring them closer and And what if they're too close? You know, let's just ignore the case that they're too close for now. We'll see that later. So, yeah. Now, let me also go to... Yeah, now let's see how bones will be created. So, in this, in the step event of forehead, firstly, let me do this. Direction equals point direction x comma y mouse x mouse y so this will always you know point towards your mouse and set the speed to um, 7 i guess and i'll see that later so now yeah we need to adjust global dot body according to health so how do we do that and i hope you guys understood this so when we have the second let's say this is the second tailbone so it would go through the body array it would find itself and then it would find the spacing between itself and the bone in front of it and according to that it will adjust and this code is still very raw we have to make it better so let's say the health is yeah so health is what global dot body will aim to be so health is 10 we need 10 bones so 10 elements here Okay, and yeah, let's see how we do that. So, if array length global dot body, if it's smaller, so our body is smaller than what we want it to be, that's health. Then we have to add a tailbone, right? And how do we add a tailbone? To add a tailbone, I would say do this var new tail equals instance create layer um, yeah now what x and y coordinates do we take um, we can, for now let's just take x and y so they'll be spawned at the head and they'll most likely you know reconfigure themselves something and then what else we need the layer id so i have only one layer instances and what object o tail got it and we need to add this new tail to our body array so array push new tail i'm sorry global dot body new tail 
Got it. Uh, yep. I think this is fine for now. So the head will point towards our mouse and follow it and it will make new tail elements. The tail elements will follow whatever bone is in front of it. Let's see how this works. Okay. Wow. What's this? Yes, we cannot have this. Sorry. And we got three expected. Yeah, probably this will work. Oh, oh yeah, we have to add one head to the room. Then unable to convert instances to N64. Okay. Um, sorry, even there I need to put a uh, yeah, syntax error, I guess. Instances, comma, yeah. And okay, now this is too fast. And I think that, yeah. We actually have how many? We have okay. The health is two now. So there are act there's actually another bone, and you can see it's kind of following it. Things get a bit bad when they're at the tip, but as of now, this is fine. Let me increase the health to let's say 10. I'm really interested in seeing what happens. Okay, you guys can see we actually have some sort of a smooth wow. This is working better than I kind of expected here. I mean, it gets kind of bad when it's too close, but wait. And tendon is the length between bones. So if I make that 20, it, it'll make the snake a bit more elongated. You see? Wow. See that? Let me just make some changes that I want to make. Image x scale equals 2. And image x y scale also should be 2. This way the head looks a bit bigger. Okay. Wow, this is... Okay, that's too big, but... You guys get the idea. This is kind of working. Let's see once again. You see that? And yeah, when it gets too close, you know, it gets a bit confused. So... You know, let's... Only set the speed to seven if point distance between x, y, mouse x, mouse y is like you know greater than 10. So, only if the mouse is like far away, we need to do this, else, we need to. Uh, else we can you know reduce the speed to zero so else speed equals how big is this video 18 minutes okay should probably stop now and else speed equals zero so you guys can see this should work better and yeah we actually have some kind of a snake snaky movement and I'm impressed this is working better than I thought in fact, let me make the health a bit crazy and let's see what happens. Okay, 100 is too much, but... Wow. Oh my god. I... <laughs> this is actually working pretty well. So, okay. You know what? I should put this in the start of the video. It would look better. Yep. That's pretty much it for this. I'm, I'm impressed. I don't know why I feel this way, but yeah. I guess it's very visually appealing okay so let's yeah what would be next in this series wow i'm actually playing this game a developer's worst nightmare falling in love with your game <laughs> okay i should stop this video i'm slapping i'll see you later